Now this might surprise you guys, cybersecurity wasn't easy for me when I first started. I definitely had some trouble learning the basic fundamentals and doing the work in the first couple of weeks. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my top four mistakes that I made when I first started this job. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll learn a thing or two and avoid the mistakes that I made. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jono and I'm currently working in cybersecurity as a SOC analyst. And the first mistake that I did when I first started in cybersecurity was that I didn't manage my expectations. To be more specific, I didn't manage my expectation on what the role of a SOC analyst actually is about. If you're not well into cybersecurity, then your common expectation of cybersecurity would be like hacking and defending against the bad guys and doing some fancy investigations. Well, at least that was the expectation that I had. When I first started my first week, or even my first month, it was really boring for me. At the time, I was given a lot of paperwork type of tasks like documentation, going through policies, chasing up on people to get them to rotate their really old access keys, stuff like that. Coming from a background of developing automations, this was really not for me. There was zero development work. My day-to-day -day tasks were just being an alert monkey, triaging incidents, and handling tickets that were assigned to our team. On top of that, I was working a lot on AWS other things, particularly on a service called Trusted Advisor. For those that don't know, AWS Trusted Advisor is essentially a service that scans your AWS environment for any vulnerabilities. So the scans at the time were giving a lot of vulnerabilities on access keys and security groups and so on. The main problem is there were no documentation on any of those things. So we didn't know who owns what. And that led me to a rabbit hole of chasing up on many people and asking if they were the owner of these things and if they could remediate them so we can clear off the vulnerabilities. Long story short, it was a really painful experience. Some people just disregarded the entire work as it's not their priority. Thinking back now, I think this was the low point for me in cybersecurity. Before I went into this field, I was actually considering between this or data engineering, which would have fit my background more when I think about it. It was definitely a moment of regret and this was about three to four months into the job. And I was actually considering leaving this role by six months. But after a long and deep consideration, I thought I should really give this a chance because of the job security and the different pathways that cybersecurity offers. So if you're new and you're thinking about getting into cybersecurity, then you need to set your expectations right as it might not be that glamorous as you might think. A good way to see if this is for you is to check out a day in life video like this one here in the pop-up or the link in the description below. Anyway, this leads me to my second point, which is to make sure you speak up. When I was second guessing my choice of going into this career path, I didn't think whether or not I could lean towards the development niche in cybersecurity. I was given so many standard SOC analyst tasks for so long that I didn't give myself the chance to realize if there are any other areas within the team that I can fill. So I took a moment to have a chat with my manager and express my interests and concerns. Luckily, my manager was very understanding and realized that my interests were misaligned with what I have been doing. So ever since that chat, my work has been pivoted to coding and automations and integrations on Splunk and AWS, which is actually what I enjoy doing. And also on the topic of speaking up, make sure to actually voice out on any blockers that you might have. Beginners have the tendency to try and keep everything to themselves, especially anything they don't understand so they don't portray a bad image. But we need to understand that we are beginners after all. So this is the best time to voice out and ask a lot of questions, raise all of your concerns and any mistakes. Big or small, everyone understands and have been through the same thing. An example I did was actually a difficult one for me and that was voicing out on an incompetent team member. I was relatively new at the time, maybe like a year in the team. So at the time we hired another SOC analyst and they were saying that they knew how to use Splunk. And when a very simple task was given to them, they weren't able to complete it and the task was handed back to me to finish it. And when everything was completed, they took the work as their own and presented it like they did everything. Apparently their interview was really good and they had good references and all. So this indicated to me that they probably bullshitted through the entire interview somehow. Anyway, more of the story is, sometimes it's justified to snitch, especially when it's affecting your work. If I didn't voice this out to my manager, then this probably would have went on for longer and things would have snowballed even more, both on me mentally and also on the team. And that leads me to my third mistake that I made, which is not to be too hard on yourself. I don't know about you guys, but usually when I start a new job, I have the tendency to work more as a way to make up for my lack of skills. When I first started my stock analyst role, I would work maybe an extra hour or so every day when I feel like I didn't do enough. And one time I made a mistake which I thought was big. I spent an extra three to four hours over time to try and sort it out at night. It was actually a small mistake with minimal impact. But when I was a beginner, everything felt 
amplified. And those extra hours that I worked every day slowly affected my work-life balance. There were days where my routine was wake up, work, sleep, and then wake up, work, sleep again for like a week straight. I think like after working maybe half a year that I realized that things at work moves at a slower pace than I expected. For example, if I was given a task to create a dashboard, I would think that it needs to be done by the next stand-up, which is like in a day's time. But realistically, we expect stuff like that to take up to maybe a week. This actually took me a while to realize as I was under the impression that for every team stand-up that we have, we need to have things accomplished by then. Ideally, that would be good, but realistically, there will always be things to disrupt the flow of work, like getting random calls from people asking for help or getting pulled into an unannounced meeting where you have no idea what's going on and you're not even sure if you're needed there, but you're too embarrassed to ask if you're still needed in the call, so you sit there in silence. Based on true story. Anyway, more of the story is things move slower than you normally expect when you're in a company. Don't be too hard on yourself if you didn't achieve anything on a particular day, maybe even that particular week. It's totally reasonable to have those moments. And as a senior member in my team right now, when I see this sort of thing happening to my new team members, I always tell them to take it easy. You're still new, don't get stressed out, and take your time to learn things. No one is expecting you to do miracles and burn out. With all that said, the last mistake that I made that you need to avoid is to really nail your understanding of cybersecurity concepts and the work that is involved. When you're working as a SOC analyst, your actions have a heavier result than normal. That's because you're the admin of the organization and any action that you take will be a privileged action that will have an impact on a wider scale. For example, if a user reported a phishing email, then you need to really make sure that the email is phishing or if it's a false positive. Let's say you decide that it's a false positive and you end up releasing the email back to the user and they might take your word for it and open up the email. There would be malicious URLs within the email and if they end up falling for the phishing attack, the consequences of the action will be on you. When you're working in cybersecurity, Everyone in the company depends on your expertise, so you have to be extra careful with what you advise people on security-related things. When I started this role, I didn't have the full understanding of all the cybersecurity concepts. I only knew about phishing emails, but I didn't really know about vulnerabilities, how SIM works, and how a standard security architecture works. I was also really bad at networking, so I kind of struggled on some of the concepts over there. Simple things like subnets and how network traffic works and the type of ports stuff like that. You need to know all these cybersecurity concepts in order to efficiently perform your role. So when I realized I was lacking all of this, I started taking an hour a day every day to take courses like Security Plus and Network Plus to nail my understanding. And if you're in the same boat as me, then this is what you need to do. Anyway, that's it from me. As always, leave a comment on any video you would like me to make. Thanks for watching.